If you want to see how I achieved this look using this quad, then stick around. Hi there, it's Ilen with another video and I'm so happy you are joining me because we are introducing a new series on this channel. I'm so excited. I just picked it back up. I had this in my hand earlier. This is the first one of the quads that I'm going to be presenting. I want to do one quad a month, but I, I am okay with math. I realize we are early March and that for this year, I won't be able to do 12 quads in 12 months. So I'm actually going to speed it up for 2019. I'm going to do a quad every 24 days or so, 24, 25 days. And so the idea here is that I'm presenting quads of color, but not necessarily being so tied to where they came from. This first set of quads, they're all coming from the Dare to Create 39A, which I destroyed. <laughs> if you want to see the video, I'll just put it right here. I really destroyed the palette and took out the, uh, the quads. And actually, in this quad is the only victim where a little chunk, well, I guess not so little chunk, fell out of this one. But all the other shadows came out so fantastic. It This one was kind of a an aberration the chunk just kind of flew out and I wasn't even crying it I don't I don't know what happened but anyway the whole point is that out of the so the 39a has 39 shadows hence the number and seven are big pans and 32 of them are small pans well 32 divided by four you get eight so I have eight of these quads just from that palette and then I also have quads that have Annabelle shadows Cleona shadows. I have shadows from a number of sources that I will be using for my monthly, or in this case, every 24-25 day quads. So this is the official kickoff. This is not a new idea. I did not come up with it. I actually saw someone who, I think she's stopped doing them on her channel, but it's Angelica or Angelica, I'm not sure, but Nikvist, I've got her last name. <laughs> She's a Swedish uh, vlogger, beauty guru type person. I think she would not like hearing beauty guru. But anyway, I will put Angelica's channel right here so that you can check her out. She's done a whole lot of these series. So the idea is that I have selected four shadows out of this very big palette and other options that I have for me. Anything that I have in my collection that are loose singles. That's really what I'm hunting through. And in this case, I chose these four and came up with this look, obviously. And they are Pine, So Glam, Spark, and Vivid. In this case, they do all come from the 39A. But the point is that a lot of us would have these shadows available to us. And I took the liberty of doing some swatches. And so here are the swatches. So Pine is a very nice matte. They are uh, powdery mattes, but they blend very nicely. So, and that's my preference, powdery mattes. So here is Pine, So Glam, which is I would almost call it an antique gold, it's very pretty. Then Spark, and Spark is has a little bit of peach to it, maybe peachy copper. It, it's I really am partial to this one, and this one and this one can make a very nice, soft, sultry look. It should be quite nice. Well, not sultry, but soft, kind of very pretty eye look. And uh, then we have Vivid, which is another matte. So I went with a couple of mattes, a couple of shimmers in this look. And this is just what I have in my waterline, which is Starfire. So this is, uh, like I said, the look to come with. And then I'm just going to offer up that the final step was this, <laughs> to turn my hand, this is a color from the Anastasia Lip Palette. Where did I put the lip palette? There it is. This is the bad boy right here, and this is the color right here. I'll just open it up for you. Whoops, there goes the plastic. So right here, that's it right there. That's number three technically in the palette. As you can see, I took a big chunk and put back half because I realized I took too much. And the thing about these 
lipsticks is that they go on extremely creamy. They're easy to put on. And they, the thing is, though, they dry down and they dry down pretty aggressively. So you have to like that feel of a pretty dry lipstick after a few minutes of application. They, they still have, you, you can still feel it. It's not complete dry down, but they do dry down your lips as they kind of set, if that makes sense. Um, I'm going to do a full video on this and yeah, that I'll just say stay tuned for that because that's coming. But long story short here is that I've selected the quad. This is the first of a number of looks that I am going to sport with using that quad. The only thing on my eyes that is not part of that quad that is eyeshadow is the brow bone. I mean, in a quad, you're not always going to have a brow bone. That's the reality of it. And I just picked an Urban Decay shadow. It's all in the description box. But if you are curious to see how I came up with this look, then you're in luck because it's coming up. So I'm going to stop talking and let's get into the demo. I've decided to go with a bold look right out of the gate. And so I am going to focus on these three colors today and going right in with a crease brush. Going in with this color Vivid. And just to make sure that you know, I am wearing two eyeshadows right now as a, a base. I had to set my primer, so it doesn't really matter. I'm using uh, Vanilla and Wheat from the Smashbox Matte Exposure, two very, very neutral shadows, as you can tell. Not, not a big deal. Okay, I'm going to continue the look by going on the lower lash line with an, an angled brush. Same color, Vivid again. Just, uh, not too, too much shadow. Just on the lower lash line. I started doing this a little while ago and I'm really, really enjoying it. Carrying the color down, same color as the base. The base color, not the base, but there we go. I'll do the other side. I forgot to mention, I also have perversion on the upper waterline. I should just say that. And I'm noticing there's a little bit of transfer on the bottom, but other than that, these are my eyes. <laughs> okay, I really like the orange effect. And by the way, the mattes are powdery, but they work, they're, they're working really well. So I'm pretty happy with that. I think I'm going to do the green in the crease and on the lower lash line and then put the gold on the lid. I think that's what I'm going to do. It's not a style I do very often, but somehow that's what's calling to me today, so that's what I'll do. So I have my smaller crease brush here. We'll use that. And I'm going into, going into the green, oops, sorry. I'm going into the green, which is called Pine. 
And all these four shadows are from the 39A, which I'm sure I've already mentioned earlier. Just picking up a little bit on the brush, we'll see how it goes. These, this is the first time for me using all of these shadows. It's not as intense as I was expecting, but I also didn't pick up a ton on the brush. I've picked up more now. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. Gone all the way to the outer corner with it. Some circular motions to try to get all the angles for the shadow back and forth. I think this is looking really nice. Just going to intensify it just a little bit more because I think that most of this green is going to get displaced by the gold and I'd like to have still some enough of the green showing up that it's it's noticeable. Okay, I won't worry about the lower lash line right now. I'll do the other side and then we will talk about next steps. Okay, I think I'm going to go with a smaller smudger brush and put the green on the lower lashes as well. So this is my smudger brush right here. I'm going to go in with the same green, just closer to the lower lash line. And other side. I like this green enough that I'm just going to do one more pass, kind of the, the first half from the outer, uh, outer corner. And as you can see, I've also extended it further in than I did initially. So I really like this color. Okay, I think we have the matte base that we want as far as colors that don't have shimmer, and I think that we are ready for the gold color, uh, which is called So Glam. Let me show you that gold color again. So this is the color that we'll be using next, and I think that this complement is super, super nice. So I think I'm going to go straight in with my finger for the gold shadow. Now I do have some fallout with these shadows, but it's not that bad at all, especially with the, the mattes. The mattes tend to be pretty powdery, so fallout from powdery mattes is not unusual at all. But I don't feel like it's anything dramatic.
the gradient coming down to the lid is really it looks very intentional even though I've never used these three shadows together before I think it looks really nice I'll just get some of the gold down here I got a little bit of shadow in my eye so not not a big deal but it's not fun And just a little bit of gold on the bottom as I did last time. Okay, I, I really like the way this look is turning out. Now the one thing with these, this quad, um, I guess focus on a given quad per month, I'm not always going to have a color that is good for brow bones. So, just go into your collection with whatever you have for brow bone if you're trying to use these colors. And I'm just going to go and pick something from my collection and finish this up. I think this turned out really nicely so let's finish the look up I'm going to take out some liner and some mascara and just give you the final look just really quickly I had talked about this gloss in a previous video and this was pixie what's it called again honey sheen but this gloss is I think a pretty close dupe to the Angelique from, or Angelic from Joe Fresh, which is my absolute favorite gloss of all time. I had talked about the fact that this gloss was pretty much done in my Roulette Pan collab. I'll put the link right here. And so I decided, I said in that video that I would try it out for a while and just confirm that this was a good dupe. And the only caveat is that you have to like a minty gloss, because this has that, that minty feel. It is thicker than Angelique, but the effect on the lip is virtually the same. And I think it's very flattering. Because it is a little bit more opaque, if you have a deeper colored lip than I do, it may show up too much, right? Uh, whereas the other one, Angelique, which is more sheer, would not have shown up as much. But I have been very much uh, enjoying wearing this one. I'm convinced when I look in the mirror that they look virtually the same you know, as I go through my day and, and look in the mirror. So I would say it's a very, very reasonable substitution. So I thought I would follow up on that as well. Now, for everything else that I have just put on, I'll just cover the setting spray first off. I did go with the Caudalie Eau de Beauté, the Beauty Elixir. That is what I put as a finishing step on my overall face. I also, for my eyes, I went back in with Perversion on the upper lash line. It is a glide-on pencil just like this one, and this is Starfire. And Starfire looks like this, and I did put a swatch here for you so that you could see, compared to the other colors we used today, that it's a pretty good match. I did that on my lower lash line. And for mascara, I used two of them. The Annabelle Skinny that has a very small wand and it's great for the lower lashes and is very inexpensive as well. Just buy it on sale at the drugstore. And then the other one is the Grand Entrance Mascara by Elizabeth Arden. I do like the effect on the lashes, but what I really don't like about this wand is it's very spiky and I keep getting myself poked in the eye and so that would not be a repurchase for me that is a deal breaker i don't like mascara wands that that have the potential of injuring me <laughs> and other mascara wands that i use like for example the l'oreal lash paradise the steel a huge the monsieur big from lancome that don't do this so i like the effect but that it's too high of a price to pay 
you know, to pay over $30 for mascara that's hurting. So I, I would definitely not repurchase. But let's talk about the final look, shall we? What do you think? I, I really like it. I think that it's as nice and grungy of a look as some of the looks I came up with with the Grind palette. If you are looking for a warm tone, rusty olivey green, I would definitely say that you can find some beautiful looks with the Dare to Create 39A. But I will more specifically say that you can get this look with these types of, of shadows and that you would be able to find this type of shadow in so many different palettes and I encourage you to um, hunt your stash, shop your stash, whatever qualifier you want to use to, well not qualifier, verb, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> the whole point is take a look at what you have if you like this look and see if uh, if you can recreate it with what you have already. That's the point of this quad series is to just show color and not to worry so much about where it came from. So that's it. That is the look. I hope that you enjoyed the demo and I hope you enjoyed my color selection for this round. If not, if it's too warm for you, just hang tight. There's next month coming up. And I thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed the content and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. But for now, take care.